Hello everyone out there. I hope each and every one of you is doing well and doing great. Uh, welcome back again to our channel, Tutoring Made Easy. And the goal of this channel is to make math easy and enjoyable. Enjoyable. Um, it's a family. It's a family. So if this is your first time coming in contact with our channel, we want you to uh, do us a favor. Please, 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 please try and subscribe. Uh, like this video and share it to as many people as possible. Um, if if you are if you've been watching our videos, thank you so much. Um, but you haven't yet uh, subscribed, please do us a favor by subscribing, liking, and sharing this video as well. But if you're already a subscriber, I want to thank you so much for supporting this channel, and I want you to keep watching and keeping uh, uh, being active on our channel. If you have any specific math um, topics that you want us to treat, feel free and, you know, drop it in the comment section below and we'll be more than willing to do a video on that. But today we are going to be looking at a different topic altogether and the topic is polynomial. But we need to find out where we are coming from. Where are we coming from? Remember, we started uh, a while back, a little while back on the topic equations, equations. And we said that we can categorize equations and the linear, linear equations, remember, and the linear equations. And we said that it's of the form, usually of the form, let's say y is equal to a plus bx, or let's say y is equal to ax plus b. Some textbooks will write it in this form, um, y is equal to mx plus c, or, or yeah, yeah. Let's put it that way. Where Now, how do we identify a linear equation? If the degree, if the coefficient of x, um, the degree on the x, if it's 1 right here, we can see the degree is 1. That tells us that it's a linear equation. It's a linear equation. Now, remember, it's an equation because there's an equal to sign in there. Without the equal to sign, maybe you have mx plus c, even though this is 1, it's just an expression. It's just an expression. So let's... Clear that one out of the way. Let's put out, put it out there. All right. The next category, the next category was polynomial. If you remember, was the polynomial, and we did mention that the polynomial we can further categorize it. The first one was a quadratic, the quadratic equations, quadratic equations, and that's what we've been able to achieve. Quadratic equations. We we looked at the three methods. If you remember. I don't know whether you can remember. We did look at the three methods. We said we use three methods um, in solving quadratic equations. We've already done all these. If, if you haven't watched those videos, the videos are available on our channel. Uh, please do us a favor and go take a look at them um, and like those videos as well. Now, the three methods we mentioned, we said the first one was the factorization method. Factorization method. And then we did mention that the second part was the quadratic formula. There was a quadratic formula, which is written as x equals to minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Minus 4ac over 2a. And then the last one, um, the last one was, was the completing of squares method. The completing of squares method, where we divided everything by the coefficient of x squared. You have something like this. You remember, if you have ax squared plus bx plus c, we divided this by a divided by a divided by a. And then we had x squared plus b over a, x plus c over a is equal to 0 by a. And then we move this one to this side, where we had x squared plus b over ax is equal to uh, minus c over a. And then we, we did take half of this term, half of the x term, half of x term, which is half times b over a, which is b over 2a, if you remember. So, and then we said that when we do that, we will square it, square and add to both sides. So, b over 2a, we square it and add, and add to each side, to each side. So, we add x squared plus b over ax plus b over 2a squared is equal to minus c over a plus b over 2a squared. And we said that 
that gives us some kind of a, like an expression. We said if you look at this, it's the same as x plus the coefficient of uh, of x, which was this one, which is b over 2a. And then we square it, and then we have our minus c over a plus b squared over 4a squared. And then we're able to find the LCM, 4a squared. This, gives, this goes here, 4a. So minus 4ac plus b squared. And then we square root both sides. So if you remember, that's the completing of squares method. We are done with that. You can go back to our video and take a look at that. We're done with that. But, but today, we're going to be looking at um, um, other polynomials, other polynomials like a cubic function. We're going to be looking at other polynomials like the cubic, a cubic function. How, how are we going to do that? Because these methods might not help us. So how do we do that to solve? How, what do we do to solve those uh, kind of um, polynomials? So we are going to look at, we are going to look at an example. So we have a polynomial here. We are going to look at it for an example. Um, we're going to use different, we're going to use three ways. We're going to use three approaches. So let's, I think three approaches and then the I think the first one um, is to use what we call the guess, the guess approach. So we are going to use all these three together. These th three approaches are going to be used together. Three approaches together. The first one is to use a guess approach, which is pretty much what we call the heuristic, heuristic approach. And you are guessing something. It's called the heuristic approach. And then the second part uh, would going to be dividing. Division of a polynomial. Division of a polynomial. Of a polynomial. Division of a polynomial. And then the third part. The third part will be to factorize. To use the factorization method. Use factorization uh, method um, to find the other factors. So those are the th three approaches. So imagine for a second that we have this problem where we have two x cubed. Sorry, let me take it again. Let's say we have 2x cubed plus 2x squared minus x minus 1 is equal to 0. What a guess approach says or the heuristic approach says is that we should look for a number, a number that we plug in into this equation. We plug into this equation, we're going to get 0. We want to make this side 0, just like this side is 0. So what number can we put in there to give us zero? Normally, people you can use you can always check. You can start from one. You can start from positive one. If it doesn't work, you try negative one. So not usually. This is what people do. This is what majority of people do. You try the number one. If it doesn't work, you try negative one. Then the next thing is two. If it doesn't work, negative two. The next thing could be half. Or you try negative half like that. So you keep guessing to see whether you're going to get zero. Now. We are going to start with x is equal to 1. When x is equal to 1, it means we're going to have 2 into x, which is 1, to the power of 3, plus 2 into x, which is 1, you square it, minus what? 1 minus 1. And let's find out what that's going to give us 0. So what is 0? Is it going to give us 0? Now we're having 2 into 1, because 1 cubed is the same as 1 times 1 times 1, which is 1. Plus, this is going to give us 2. Why? Sorry, 2 to 1. Because 1 squared is 1 times 1. We're going to get negative 1 minus 1 is 0. Now, this gives us 2 plus 2 minus 2. Because you are owing 1 and owing 1. So, that's minus 2. And this is not going to be 0. This is actually 4 minus 2. So, x is equal to 1 does not work. It's not working for us. x minus 1 is not working for us. So, let's try x is equal to negative 1. Let's try x is equal to negative 1 and let's see. Let's say x is equal to negative 1. We're going to get 2 into negative 1 cubed plus 2 into negative 1 squared minus this x. Negative 1 minus 1 is 0. All right. Now, we're going to get 2 into what? Negative 1. Why? Because negative 1 cubed is the same as negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1. This gives you 1 times negative 1 and gives you negative 1 right there. Now, if you look at this. We're still going to get 2 into 1 because negative 1 squared is the same as negative 1 times negative 1, which is 1. And then this gives you plus 1, right? Because negative 1 times negative 1 is plus 1. This one right here. 
Let me maybe write it well. I didn't probably write it well. Sorry about that. So we get plus one and we're going to have our negative one equals zero right there. Now we keep going. You see that this gives us negative two plus this gives us positive two. And this is plus one minus one. And I think it's zero because negative two plus two is zero. Plus one minus one is zero. So it's zero. So x equals to negative one works. Hooray. Hooray. We've done <laughs> We've achieved something. At least we know the first number that we can be able to start with is x equal to negative 1. So if x is equal to negative 1, right, we've been able to determine that when x is equal to negative 1, we are going to get 2 into negative 1 cubed plus 2 into negative 1 squared minus negative 1 minus 1, and it gives us 0. And that because, because there, we say that therefore, x is equal to negative 1, and x, right, and x is equal to negative 1, x is equal to negative 1, is a factor. If x is equal to negative 1 is a factor, huh, then we are going to have x which is equal to negative 1. We are going to bring this 1 here, so that we are going to have x plus 1 is 0, because if we bring this negative here, the sign changes. It crosses the equal to sign, so the negative should change to positive. And then here is going to be zero. So we're going to use that to divide. We're going to do a division. We're going to do the division. We're going to do the division. Um, and to do the division, we're going to use the factor, x plus 1. And then it's going to, that's what's going to do the division. So this one usually is called the divisor. Do you remember? This is called the divisor because it's the one that is going to uh, do the division. It's the divisor. And then what is going to go inside is the is the is the cubic function. This is our cubic function. It's going to go in there. So we're going to have 2x cubed plus 2x squared minus x minus 1 uh, is, is, our, is our cubic function. And we said that that is called what? This is known as the dividend. The dividend. And then whatever we get here will be the quotient. That's going to be the quotient. That'll be the quotient. All right. So let's keep that in mind. Let's keep that in mind. Let's keep that in mind. So we're going to do the division, and let's see how it works. Now, to do the division, what we do is that we always start with this one here. We're going to divide this by that, okay? When we divide this by this, we're going to get 2x cubed divided by x is going to give us, remember, the base here is the same, so we subtract the indices, so we're going to get 2 multiplied by x3 minus 1, which gives us 2 x to the power of 2. Don't forget that. So we're going to put 2x squared on top of this 2x cubed. All right? We've done that. Then we are not done yet. The moment you put something on top here, you have to multiply it with each of the items. So we multiply this, and we are going to get 2x cubed back because you have 2x squared multiplying x. The bases are the same, and we are multiplying, so we add the exponent. So it's going to be 2 plus 1. 2x cubed, all right? So don't forget that. Then we're also going to multiply the same thing here. And that's going to give us plus 2x squared. Plus 2x squared. And then what are we going to get? We are going to subtract. Now, we know that 2x cubed minus 2x cubed is 0. And then 2x squared minus 2x is also 0. So that's 0. Now, once we are done, you see this, this here, we're going to drop it here. We're going to have... We're going to have something like this. We're going to have minus x, because that's what is right here. We dropped it, we got minus x. And once we drop that, once we drop that, um, we're also going to drop this one too, because the number. So we're also going to drop that. We're going to get minus x minus 1. Now, the next thing we're going to do is to ask ourselves, okay, is to ask ourselves x Divided by this negative x is negative 1. If you have x divided by negative x, this cancels and you have negative 1. So we put a negative 1 here. And then immediately we put something on top that multiplies this. And we are going to get negative 1 times x is what? Negative x. And then the same negative 1, we multiply the plus 1 and we get negative 1. Now remember, we're going to subtract. So it's going to be negative x minus another negative x. Don't forget, this and this is what we are subtracting. So we are going to have negative x. This negative and this negative become positive x, and that gives us 0. So this gives us 0. Now, we also have the negative 1 minus another negative 1. 
Don't forget that we are subtracting these two, this and that. But the sign in the middle is negative. So we're going to have negative 1. This negative and negative give us positive 1, and we get what? 0 right there. We get 0. We get 0 right there. All right. So we are going to have 0. We are going to have 0 here. And then we are pretty much going to have uh, 2x squared minus 1 as the one on top. So we know, we know that we currently know that we have a factor. One of the factors we have, remember we have 2x cubed plus 2x squared minus x minus 1 is equal to 0, right? You remember this. We've been able to do the guess approach to arrive at one of the factors. And now we've also been able to do the division. We've done the division, and then in the division, we are getting the, this to be the quotient. Okay? Now, we also know that we have a factor. So one of the factors under this approach, you know, when we came under this approach was what? X plus 1. Now we've done the division, and we are getting what? 2X squared minus what? Minus 1. So here, we are getting X plus 1. And here, under here, this column, the second approach, we are getting 2X squared minus 1 as the word quotient. And it's a factor. So now we have the factors, what? One of the factors, the factors are X plus 1, and then we also have 2X squared minus 1. We have 2x squared minus 1. So those are the, these are the factors. These are the factors of the um, polynomial. These are the factors of the polynomial. I hope um, this helps. I hope this helps in knowing how to solve a polynomial. So you're going to use the same approach to apply to many polynomials as possible. Please, if this is your first time, coming in contact with our videos, uh, please do us a favor uh, by subscribing, liking this video and sharing it. Uh, we are now a family. If you've also been watching our videos, we thank you. If you are, you're already a subscriber, we are, we are grateful for your support as we are a family and we are embarking on this math journey um, um, together. And the goal um, on this journey is to make math easy and enjoyable. So please, please, Call a friend and let him get on this channel to support this channel grow so that we can help as many people around the world as possible. I'll come to you another time. Uh, please take care and bye.